This video will show you the materials and techniques involved with building and installing a flexible pond leveler, a device used to alleviate flooding problems for humans that are caused by beaver dams. Flexible pond levelers are highly effective at alleviating problems while preserving the wetland ecosystems created by beavers and their dams. This is a diagram of a finished flexible pond leveler. Excess pond water enters the device through the intake fence and flows through the flexible pipe, exiting the pipe at the end buried in the beaver dam itself. Let's start by learning about building the intake fence. This fencing is called goat panel. It measures four feet wide and 16 feet long. It is made from six gauge galvanized steel and has four inch mesh. Heavier four gauge steel fence can also be used, but it's more difficult to bend and cut than six gauge. Do not use any fence with wire thinner than 6 gauge because it's not rigid enough and will corrode quickly. Anything that comes in a roll rather than as a flat panel is too flimsy to use. To bend the goat panel into a cylindrical fence that will protect the intake of the pond leveler pipe, spread your feet and pull up on the fence to create a slight bend every 6 to 12 inches. Step back one foot and repeat the process. Make your bend small and uniform to create a symmetrical cylinder. The diameter of the cylinder is dictated by the diameter of the pipe you will use. When using 10 inch or 12 inch diameter pipe, the fence diameter should be 5 feet and for 15 inch pipe, the intake fence diameter will need to be 6 feet. If the cylinders are made smaller, you risk the beavers feeling the water flow through the fence and if that happens, they'll bury the entire intake fence with mud and sticks to stop the flow. These are hog rings. Hog rings are used to join sections of fence. Use heavy-duty hog rings purchased from a chain link fence supplier. These rings are made from 9 gauge galvanized steel and are 1 and 9 16 inches long. To finish forming the sides of the cylinder, overlap the fence ends by one square and fasten them together with hog rings to make a strong seam. A hog ring gun can be purchased and used to speed up installation. Load a string of hog rings into the gun, then squeeze the handles together. It may be difficult to fit the hog ring gun and thus use it in some applications. To create a top and bottom for the intake fence structure, cut two 5 foot square panels if you are using 10 or 12 inch diameter pipe, or two 6 foot square panels for a 15 inch pipe. Tack the first panel, which will act as the top, to the cylindrical intake fence with a hog ring at the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock positions. Using your bolt cutters, cut off the top fence corners, leaving only prongs extending past the cylinder wall. Bend the prongs with fence pliers to further secure the top panel to the cylinder. Flip the structure and follow the same procedure to enclose the bottom of the intake fence. Now cut a hole for your pipe, approximately 8 inches from the bottom of the fence. To make it easier, later, to insert the pipe into the fence, bend the wire prongs out of the way. Now let's look at the pipe used to make a flexible pond leveler. Corrugated pipe is used. This high density polyethylene pipe typically comes in 20 foot lengths. Pipe can be purchased from masonry and farm supply stores. It comes in single and dual wall construction. Dual wall is more widely available and since it is thicker, it is less likely beavers will hear the water moving inside the pipe and will be able to then chew through it. Notice how easily this single wall pipe bends, as compared to the dual wall pipe. Since 20 foot lengths of dual wall pipe do not flex, they tend to bow up and out of the water over time. To resolve these issues, cut dual wall pipe into 10 foot sections. Later, you will reconnect them with split couplers. This allows the pipe to have a little more flexibility and decreases the chances that the pipe will float after the installation is complete. Before heading out to a project site, slit the pipe with a circular saw to allow air to escape and prevent the pipe from floating. 
Only a single slit is needed for single wall pipe. Dual wall pipe needs a single slit at the top of the pipe and four slits at the bottom to allow each ridge to fill with water so the pipe will sink. Set your circular saw depth so only the high points of the corrugations are slit and not the low points. Transporting pipe and fencing can be done on a ladder rack such as this or on a trailer. Either way, make sure your load is fastened securely with ratchet straps during transport. Since all your materials and tools will likely need to be hand carried from your truck to the dam, try to park as close as possible to the dam. One advantage of creating a circular intake fence is you can roll it. To prepare the pipe for installation, drill two holes about two inches apart at the end of the pipe at what will be the bottom of the pipe once it's installed. Bend the end of a length of 9 gauge galvanized smooth wire to make it easier to thread through the holes you've drilled. The wire will be used later to secure the pipe to the bottom center of your intake fence. Measure about 2 feet from the end of the pipe and then drill two sets of holes on the top of the pipe as indicated by the green stripe. Later you will thread wire through these holes to further secure the pipe to the intake fence. Slide the inlet of the pipe into the fence structure until it is just short of the center of the intake fence bottom. This will minimize the risk of beavers feeling the water flowing into the pipe. Now bend the prongs that you left earlier around the opening in the fence down onto the pipe to hold it in place. Then thread a piece of wire through one of the pairs of holes you drilled two feet from the end of the pipe. Cross the wire. When crossed, the wires will prevent the pipe from rotating. This will keep your pipe vent holes at the top. Wrap the wire around the fence to further hold the pipe in place. Repeat the procedure for the second wire, threading it through the holes you drilled, crossing it, and wrapping it around the fence. Now flip the intake fence upside down. Bend the rest of the prongs down onto the pipe. Attach the wire you installed at the very end of the pipe to the bottom of the cage in order to keep the intake of the pipe from moving from side to side. This will ensure the end of the pipe is far enough from the fence sides so that the beavers will not sense the water moving and thus not try to block the flow. Split couplers make ideal pipe section connectors. Once your vent holes are aligned along the top surface of the pipe, along the green stripe, Use one and one quarter inch galvanized screws through the coupler into both pipe ends to prevent the vent holes on each pipe from rotating away from the top. Concrete blocks held on by wire are used to weigh the pipe down. Drill two holes through which you will thread wire. Alternatively, you can run a wire around the entire pipe to attach the blocks. In order to prevent air from accumulating in dual wall pipes, drill a quarter inch hole every few feet through the top of the pipe. This will allow gases that accumulate from biological activity to escape the pipe. If you don't do this, eventually gas will build up inside and your pipe is likely to float to the surface. With the intake fence still upside down and positioned next to the water, tie pontoons made from plastic pipe to the bottom of the intake fence, perpendicular to the pipe. When tying the pontoons to the side wall of the intake fence, use shoelace knots. It is very important that these knots can easily be undone with one pull when you are out in the water. Difficulty releasing the pontoons in deep water can result in your pond leveler sinking prematurely and landing on its side rather than in an upright position. Sometimes there are submerged obstacles such as tree trunks or boulders that may get in the way of your pipe lying on the pond bottom. Scout the area first, feeling with your feet if the water is deep before you float your device out into the pond. By floating the device on pontoons, one person can maneuver it into position and install it. Attaching concrete blocks to the pipe before you sink it in deep water will help keep the pipe on the pond bottom. Rest the outflow end of the pipe on the dam before you sink the intake fence. Having tied the pontoons with knots that are easily untied is critical at this next stage of the installation. Untie the pontoon closest to the beaver dam first and roll it back to the second pontoon. Your pipe will start taking in water. Untie the second pontoon and let both pontoons roll out from under the intake fence while you guide the fence as it sinks so it doesn't flip on its side. 
Before breaching the dam, secure your pipe to the side of where you will be working to keep it out of your way. The first step in breaching the dam is to remove sticks from the downstream side of the dam at the point where you plan to dig your pipe trench. Then, continue digging the breach trench from the top of the dam. Save as much of the excavated material as you can on top of the dam for later use and to minimize downstream silting. Some of this work is best accomplished using just your hands. A harvester or potato rake is a great tool to help dig your trench wide and deep enough to lay the pipe into. Dig your trench well out into the pond so that the pipe outlet end is at the highest point and when the pond is at the desired level, none of the pipe will be exposed to the air. If any of the pipe is exposed, the beavers may chew on it. Now attach a second block about 10 feet from the pipe outlet using the wire you installed earlier. If you've correctly installed the pipe such that the pipe outlet is the highest point along the pipe, the height of the pipe outlet will control the final pond level. At the pipe outlet, dig your trench several inches deeper than your desired pond level so that when the water is flowing through the pipe, you'll end up with the right pond level. Reuse the mud and sticks you excavated and saved earlier from digging your trench to bury the pipe in the dam trench. It is a good idea to dig what we call a diversion breach in the dam. A diversion breach will help release extra water quicker and draw the beaver's attention away from your pipe breach that first night after installation. The materials you remove from the diversion breach can be used to further bury your pond leveler pipe in the dam. After sealing any leaks around the pipe in the trench, most of the escaping water should be coming through the pipe and your diversion breach. This completes the installation. Keep in mind that in most regions, permits are needed to breach beaver dams and install pond leveler pipes. It is your responsibility to learn about and obtain the required permits and comply with all regulations in your area, and also ensure you have landowner and other necessary permissions. Never release water from a beaver dam without knowing where that water is going in order to prevent any potential downstream flooding issues. Breaching a beaver dam can be dangerous work. Use gloves, eye protection, and caution at all times. With proper techniques, most beaver-human conflicts can be resolved through the use of a flexible pond leveler that lowers pond levels, eliminates flooding of property, yet preserves wetland habitat and biodiversity created by beavers. For a wealth of information on resolving beaver-human conflicts, training, research, grants, our online library, and much more, please visit the Beaver Institute's website at www.beaverinstitute.org. Thank you for your interest.